What's up, internet? If you truly want the best sound out of your car audio speakers, proper sound treatment of the vehicle is an absolute must. But to really do the sound treatment process correctly, we need multiple different layers of different materials. The first material is what most people are familiar with, and it really just helps to cut down on vibrations within the vehicle. Other materials and layers help to stop airborne noise and also keep different components from within the vehicle from vibrating against one another. Applying all these different materials and layers can really make a vehicle sound awesome, but it can be time consuming and difficult. What if there was a way to combine all these layers and materials into one? It would really simplify the process. How could we use such a material to improve our sound? And what kind of improvements would we actually see? Well, in this video, I'm going to teach you how and show you. Let's get started. The particular vehicle that I'm doing this install on is a Chevy Impala, but for the most part, almost all vehicles will follow a similar process. Applying sound treatment materials to the whole car can have great benefits, but in this video, I really just want to focus on just treating the front doors. This is something that I feel everyone should be able to tackle, and it's a great step to consider doing when you're upgrading your front speakers. Now this car has a completely stock system, and I will not be installing any speakers. I really want to focus on the how-to process and the benefits. Now although it is not required, I wanted to start this tutorial process with taking some initial measurements of the in-car acoustic response. Since this vehicle has a 6.5 inch speaker in the door and a tweeter in the A-pillar, I'm really only focusing on the frequencies that the 6.5 inch speaker is playing. Later in the video, I'll be able to compare this before data to the after. To begin installing sound treatment, we first need to remove the OEM door panel. If you're unsure how to do this, you can find almost any door panel removal video on YouTube. Be sure to thank the person for their time by slamming that like button. After removing the door panel, you will oftentimes find what's called a vapor barrier, or an OEM sound insulation panel, which covers a large hole in the inner door skin. Sometimes to remove this, you simply peel it away. In other vehicles, this cover may be a more solid piece of material that you need to unbolt to remove. The goal here is to gain access to the inside of the door, so we'll also want to remove the speaker. The last step to prepping the door is cleaning all surfaces with rubbing alcohol to remove any grease or oils. For this install, I'm using a new sound treatment material called Soundskins. Soundskins combines the standard butyl and foil layers most people think of when they hear the term sound deadening with an additional layer of closed cell foam. More on the benefits of this later. To start the process, I cut a small square and remove the protective backing. I then apply this square behind the speaker area. In order to fully adhere the sound skins to the sheet metal, I use a wooden roller to firmly push the material against the metal. I repeat this process with four to five additional squares, and contrary to popular belief, you really only need to cover about 25% of the solid sheet metal that makes up the outer shape of the door. By applying the sound skins to the outer sheet metal, we reduce the panel vibrations that can rob the speakers of acoustic energy. Next, I turn my attention to the inner door skin sheet metal, but before I do so, I want to address any potential sources of vibration. For example, I found that the manual locking mechanism on this car vibrates against the sheet metal, so I cut a small piece of the sound skins and stick it in a location to stop the vibration. The closed cell foam layer works to effectively decouple surfaces from one another. In order to properly sound treat the inner door skin, I will be covering the entire surface. I'm starting with applying some very wide, transparent Tessa tape so that I can draw and capture the shape that I will need. You could also use several strips of wide painter's tape. The goal here is that I want to seal any holes in the metal so that the cavity acts as sort of a large enclosure. This keeps the rear speaker sound wave from interacting with the speaker wave from the front. Doing this prevents cancellation and it can drastically help improve mid-bass response. Now I'm actually transferring this shape to cardboard first. I think that this is a great idea for shops. Make yourself a cardboard template and label it with the make and model of the vehicle. When a similar car comes in, you can easily cut your material without needing to retrace the door. I now transfer this shape to my sound skins. Something I really like about this material is that it comes in a roll 20 inches wide by 79 inches long. And what this means is it's easy to cut this whole shape in one piece. No stitching of multiple pieces together. After one more quick fitment check, I remove the protective backing and apply the solid sheet. 
Then, much like before, I use my wooden roller to roll out any bubbles and adhere the material to the metal. After reinstalling the speaker, the door is now much more sealed and ready to pump out some killer mid-bass. But we're not done yet. Now we turn our attention to sound treating the plastic door panel. First and foremost, I target any wire harnesses that could potentially vibrate against the plastic. This is where the sound skin shines once again because with adding it in this location, I not only keep the plastic from vibrating, the foam also separates the wires from a hard surface. No worries about rattles. Next, I want to completely cover the area around the speaker opening. The plastic is usually somewhat flimsy and very prone to noise issues in this location. I have a couple of quick tips for you. First of all, you don't want to apply it on any of the surfaces that may prevent the panel from fitting back on the door. Secondly, all those little bits and pieces you cut away doing the sheet metal door skin can really come in handy here for fitting into those small gaps. Once your door panel is treated, it's time to reassemble. And if you are careful about not covering mounting holes during your sound treatment process, this should be the easy part. And from there, you are done. But let's take a few measurements and a listen and see what changed. Before I installed the sound skins, I measured six sweeps recording their sound pressure level. The average of these measurements is shown here in yellow. After the install was complete, I performed the same test with the volume level the same and all other variables held constant. The red line shows the after. You can see an improvement throughout the bass range. What I found most interesting was the taming of the deep valley and tall peak between 150 and 175 hertz. Another big improvement is when you're driving down the road, the road noise is nowhere near as loud, so it's easier to hear the small nuances in the music, and it also makes for a much more comfortable ride. What do you think, quieter? Quieter. <laughs> A big thanks goes out to Soundskins for sending me some sample rolls to test and try out. I do really like that this material seems to simplify the sound treatment process and you're effectively getting multiple different materials in one. If you guys would like to learn more about Soundskins and see what they have to offer, you can check out the link down in the video description. A special thanks goes out to Emmanuel, EJ, Rory, Eddie, Truman, and Jerry, along with all the other Patreon supporters. Thank you guys for your continued support of making these videos. For anyone that's new to the channel, you can check out some of my other videos over here. And if you if you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking the link down below. Thank you for watching this video.